Welcome to the Expense Report User Training. Today we'll go over how to start your expense report, add expenses, attach your receipts, and submit your expense report to the approval queue. First, we'll navigate to the expense report screen by clicking on the Browse Applications bar and navigating through the menu, Time and Expense, Expense, Expense Reports, and then Manage Expense Reports. You can also access this screen using the Favorites menu or the star, star icon under the Save button and clicking on the Expense Report application. The Expense Report screen looks a lot like your timesheet screen in that it has a header section and a detail section down below. It is vital to the success of your expense report that you fill out the entire header before moving on to your ex expenses down below. So we will go through the purpose, locations, and default charges tabs before we add any expense lines to our report. Under the purpose tab, you'll see that we have a few fields to fill in, including the expense report date, the expense report type, which is a drop down. We have three options here, local travel, long distance travel, or non-travel expense report. We'll start with the local travel. We'll also need to put in a description. This should be a short, brief description of what is on the expense report. And then we'll enter the from and to date. For local travel, it'll probably usually be one day. If you want to submit multiple days on one expense report, you can make this a longer period of time and then just change your expense date on each line down below. Next, we'll fill in the purpose, and this should be a more detailed description of your, the items on your expense report. Now that our purpose tab is completely filled out, we'll move on to the locations tab. Click add location link under the location column, and you'll get a pop-up window. In this location, you can just enter something that makes sense to, um, to this expense report and then click the apply button and you'll see that location fill in to the screen back behind. Once the location is filled in, we can move on to our default charges tab. This is where we'll enter the project for our expense report. You can use the magnifying glass in the charge field to access your charge tree, very similar to the charge tree that you access in your time card. Now that we've filled out our header, we filled out the purpose, locations, and default charges tabs, we can go ahead and save and continue our expense report. You can see once I've hit the Save button, my expense report ID fills in. Um, the description also will fill in depending on what I put into that purpose tab. Once we've saved our header, we can move on to our claimed expenses down below. Add a claimed expense by clicking the Add Claimed Expense button. And then use the magnifying glass to identify the category. The category options will change depending on which expense report type you have. So for local travel, we have a few different options here. You'll see that once we've picked a category, the expense type will automatically fill in as well. You can, again, if you have an expense report that's covering multiple days, you can edit the expense date to align with the date that that expense is actually incurred. And depending on which category you pick, there'll be different fields that are required or not. So with the mileage category, we have a detailed other tab that is required to be filled out. This is where we'll, we will enter our mileage 
total number of miles for the trip is entered here. Any personal miles, so if you took a detour for a personal reason, you could de deduct those hours from your reimbursable total. Zero is a perfectly acceptable answer for personal miles, and the total down below is the number of miles that you will actually be reimbursed for. Moving on to our expense amount tab, you can see that the expense incurred is um, automatically calculated depending on that previous details tab. And now we can go ahead and save our first expense. Let's go ahead and add another claimed expense to this expense report. Click the button. Again, choose your category. The expense type automatically fills in for this one. Again, edit the expense date if necessary. And then you'll see the category parking does not require that details other tab. We only we can skip straight to our expense amount tab and enter our expense incurred. Go ahead and save and continue. Let's check out a different expense report type. We'll start a new expense report by clicking the new expense report button up above. For this expense report, we'll choose a long distance travel. Again, we'll fill in our description. For those of you that require contract officer approval before traveling, you can enter your travel request approval number in that description field. Enter the beginning and end dates of your trip. And then again, fill in the purpose. And for those of you that have a travel request approval, you can summarize the travel efforts in that purpose field. Moving on to the locations tab. Again, click add location. This screen is a little bit different than our local travel location screen. This one will use drop down menus to choose the um, area that we are traveling to. And then click apply. Now that our location tab is filled out, let's move on to the default charges again. And save our expense report now that we have filled out that purpose, locations, and default charges tab. Again, it is vital to the success of your expense report to make sure that all three of those tabs are filled out before moving on to your claimed expenses. Add claimed expense. View a few different categories listed under the long travel distance, long distance travel. Let's start with exploring the meals option. So you can see the expense type M and I E automatically fills in. The location will automatically fill in as well from the location on your headers tab. And let's move on to the meal detail tab down below. Under the meals detail tab, this is where you dictate what expense or what meals you should be reimbursed your M and I E for. <clears throat> so if there is a day that maybe the lunch was provided or um, you had some other reason for not claiming that particular meal, you can uncheck that meal and you can see that my subtotal will automatically reduce by the per diem for that particular meal. This per diem will automatically calculate based on the location that you input in your location header tab, as well as the from and to dates on your purpose tab. 
You'll notice the first day of trip and last day of trip checkboxes next to the from and to date. These checkboxes indicate that there should that the the per diem on these particular days are considered travel days and should be reimbursed at a 75% of the per diem. That calculation is taken into account when um, the system calculates the subtotal. Let's move on to the expense amount tab. <clears throat> and you can see the ex expense incurred will automatically fill in from that previous meal detail tab. We'll save after adding that expense. And let's add another claimed expense to our long distance travel expense report. Let's take a look at the lodging expense category. You can see that the, uh, per diem lodging is the first um, automatic default in here <clears throat> with the location. The check-in, check-out dates automatically fill in from your header as well. Let's move on to the room rate tab. You'll see that you have to input your individual room rate and the tax rate per night. It's split out like this to accommodate all government regulations, so we just have to make sure to fill in each night. And then move on to the expense amount tab. In the expense incurred box, go ahead and enter the total for your particular lodging cost. This expense incurred amount must match the total on your room rates tab. Once we've ensured that those two amounts match, we can go ahead and save that expense. Let's add one more expense line to our long distance travel expense report. Under the category, let's pick the ground transportation category. And you can see that this expense type does not automatically fill in. We can use the magnifying glass to identify the expense types that are available under the category ground transportation. So let's choose car rental. Again, edit your expense date if necessary and then enter the expense amount. Important to note for any kind of car rental expense type, um, if there are more than one person traveling, you should have all of the car rental expenses on one expense report. So they should be, uh, one person should be responsible for all of those expenses, including any kind of fuel, mileage, rental fees, should all be on one expense report. We'll go ahead and save that expense report. And let's look at the last expense report type, which is our non-travel. You can see for the non-travel expense report, the from and to dates are no longer required fields. We only have to fill in our description and purpose. Again, we'll fill in a shorter description of what is on the expense report in the description field, and then we'll fill in the longer purpose um, in, the, in the purpose field. Moving along our header tabs, you can see the location tab is actually not available either. That is because this is a non-travel expense report, a location is irrelevant. We'll go ahead and skip straight to our default charges tab and enter our project. Let's go ahead and add a claimed expense to our non-travel expense report. Choose the category. You can see we have some different categories here as well.
Again, different categories require different fields. So the supplies category requires a detailed description. And then we'll skip straight to our expense amount tab and fill in the amount expense incurred. Now that we've reviewed all of the different expense report types, let's look at how to attach your receipts and submit your expense report. To attach receipts, you can navigate to the overall attachments tab in the header. Choose the attach button on the right hand side of your screen. And then browse through your computer folders to find the receipt file. Click the upload button and you'll see that the information fills in about your uploaded receipt. The system is set up to only receive one receipt file. You'll need to combine all of your receipts for the expense report into one PDF file. You can also use a Word document if that's easier. After you've uploaded your attachment, Make sure to save your expense report. You can review all of your claimed expenses by clicking through the claimed expenses with your white arrows. You can also put your claimed expenses into a table form or table view and look at it in more of a list fashion. This is particularly helpful if you have many expense types on or charge types on an expense report. And you want to make sure that you have all of the, the expenses for that particular trip in one report. After we reviewed our expense report, we're ready to submit it. Go ahead and click that Submit button. And you'll notice that once it's been submitted, the status will update from draft to submitted. If I click on the Submitted status, I'll get a pop-up that shows the workflow of this particular expense report. The lines in green are the lines that have been completed. You can see the person and timestamp that completed those items. Any items in yellow are the next pending items. So you can watch your, your expense report work go through the approval workflow. Once my expense my my supervisor has Approved my expense report, that will turn green, and the expense admin will re review it next. You'll notice that the status of your expense report will update after each of these items. Once my expense report is in the submitted status, from an employee perspective, I'm completed with my, I'm done with my expense report, it's completed, um, unless it's been rejected, in which case I would have to edit and resubmit. That is all for the expense report user training. Um, good luck with your expense report.